Hey guys, Zethrion here from Langrisser C. I'm from the Guild Legion of Scorn, and this is part 4 of the Langrisser Beginner's Guide. And uh, we're going to start on focusing on how to make your team of heroes stronger. How do you get from the very bottom, which is 1000 power, to something like this, which is 8000 power. There are a lot of things that go into building a hero, and we will use our lousy little Alfred over here <laughs> as an example of what to do. So the first thing that you will see that's the easiest to do is to level up the hero themselves and every time you level up you get a stat boost. Your hero's maximum level is pegged to your account level which you can see over here. So your overall account level, your team level as it were, you add plus one to that and that is the maximum that your hero can be leveled up to. So for example, my account level is 70, however the max level is 70. So if you were, let's say, level 25, you will only be able to level up your heroes to level 26. Now where do you get these uh, XP potions to level up your heroes from? Well, you get them from two separate places. The first and most obvious place would be the Secret Realm Training School, where you will get experience potions for doing this daily. You can do this with daily bonuses twice a day, and I would highly recommend that you get this done, so that you can build up more experience potions to level up your heroes. The second place where you can get experience potions is in the store itself. Uh, do not ever buy, buy anything from the black market. This is a hoax. This is a scam. Please go to Friendship instead, and you can find rare experience potions that you can buy with Friendship Points that you get from adding people to your friends list and which I'm about to do and I'm doing. So that's the very first and easiest thing to do which is to level up your hero. Right. The other thing that you will see is this thing called the star level, the hero star level. So uh, in order to level up the star levels you need shards and what that does is that uh, you need uh, different kinds of shards, different amounts of shards for the different star levels you get. Um, this is the same for SR heroes, or SR heroes, or SSR heroes, sorry, not, not you, <laughs> or SSR heroes, they all need shards in order to level up to six stars. Um, what that uh, matter, why that matters, whether you're three star or six star, is that it uh, increases all of their stats. Not only that, it also upgrades their talent that you see over here. With each upgrade in your star level, the talent usually changes and becomes better. And it sometimes can make the character a completely different uh, play, make them play out in completely different ways. For example, um, the classic example would be Tiaris. At 6 stars, uh, she has a 100% chance if uh, to give this buff to other friendly units and they all have a 100% chance to recover HP every single time they are attacked, which is as insane as it sounds when it's on your tank. Every time your tank gets hit, he heals back. And this 100% chance only activates at 6 stars. It's only 100% at 6 stars. At 5 stars, is 80%. At 4 stars, is 50%. So you can see there is a big difference for some heroes, and actually all heroes, in, in, in increasing the star level. So how do you get shards of heroes? Well, um, the most obvious way is to summon for them. Summon duplicates uh, of heroes from banners, and that will enable you to get shards. Every time you get a duplicate SR hero, you get 20 shards. Every time you get a duplicate SSR hero, you will get 50 shards. And that's how you shard them up. The other way, the more free-to-play friendly way, is you can actually do their Gate of Fate in order to uh, farm shards for them. So if you look at the Gate of Fate here, you can see that there is a first completion bonus of 5 shards and every single day you can do this in order to get one additional shard for this hero. For example, if I were to want to farm up, let's say, uh, Leon Hart, I want to farm his shards, uh, I would do this quest and every day, uh, without fail, I would come back and I would sweep these quests, these Gate of Fate quests so that I can get his memory shards and eventually shard him up to 6 stars. Um, so that is uh, one important thing to remember. Please do your Gate of Fate missions every day. You have 9 challenge chances per day. These levels are level locked. Um, so you can see the difficulty level 25 all the way up to difficulty level of 45. So uh, there are some times when you won't be able to access all of your heroes, Gate of Fates at the start, but just farm whatever you can because these hero shards are invaluable. If you've ever played any gacha game before, this is basically um, the game telling you that you don't have to summon duplicates in order to max out your hero, which is always something that's very welcome to hear uh, in a gacha system. So the Gate of Fate system is something that really drew me to Langrisser and it's something to take note of so that you can increase your hero's star level and consequently their power. The last 
two things we'll be focusing on will be class mastery upgrade. So let's say you want to upgrade Alfred. I'll just level him up um, just so that you can see what happens. So I'm going to level him up to level, I don't know, 50 arbitrarily. And you can see that his stats got better uh, just by leveling him up. This is the smallest upgrade though. The next most important upgrade would be the class mastery upgrades. You will see that uh, his class, which is fighter, can be upgraded further and you will require materials to do so. At the start, you'll be getting these materials from time rifts and if you click on the material, it even tell you where which time rift drops it. A quick tip is that if you see elite, always go for the elite ones first. Even though it is only three out of three chances per day, these are a guaranteed drop if you sweep them or if you complete the map. As compared to if you go to the normal time rifts, these are RNG. They might not drop for you. You might not be able to get the material that is stated there. The best place, however, to get this and save stamina would be in the guild store. And let's go get that now. So we're going go to go to the guild store and we're going to get about the battle practice scroll, scroll that we require to upgrade uh, Alfred's classes. So um, as you level up, you will up and if you join the guild, you will see these uh, materials available for you for purchase to upgrade your hero's classes and this is a very 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 big help it's because of this that i highly encourage every new player to try to join a guild if they can and take part in the guild's guild war the guild battle uh, i'll just show you that function over here so in the guild battle you can see oops <laughs> we dispersed rewards already my apologies anyway um so the the guild event is basically a guild battle where you take part you defeat pve enemies in return for guild medals uh, which you can see over here and these basically are, can be exchanged in the guild store for all your class materials which you need to upgrade your heroes so let's go ahead and do that now for alfred just to show you how it works um, when you ever you upgrade class uh, the level of that class you see you click advance you will see that his stats will improve uh, over here and you will also get new skills as well so every time you upgrade you see you can get stats but you also get skills and this is a tier one class basically ideally you want your heroes to advance all the way into their tier, their tier three class because the tier three classes obviously will have higher stats higher attack higher health higher defense than the tier two or tier one class and we're going to go ahead and upgrade him to serpent knight so that uh, we can show you how it's done So there's this fancy animation that plays when you upgrade your hero's classes. And he's now a Serpent Knight. You can see also that his stat boosts, uh, his stats go up somewhat. <laughs> okay, okay, Alfred, don't get ahead of yourself. So you can see that when we upgraded to that, we already got one of the first troops, which is the Merman Lord. The second upgrade, uh, the first dot here will give you the skill. The second dot here will give you the next troop and the last dot will give you the mastery bonus. The mastery bonus is basically permanent stat boost that carry over no matter what class you're in. Uh, so all the stat boosts that come in between uh, these levels will only uh, apply to this class while you're in it. If you change classes, those stat boosts will normally, no longer be present. So let me just show you what it's like to upgrade someone to a tier 3 class. So we're going to get the power ribbon for him. We're going to get the survival training score for him. We're going to upgrade and we'll get a new skill when we advance his class. Uh, in this, you can see the stat boost as well. Okay, and we get a new skill. So we keep, we'll keep keep going until we hit the tier 3 class for Alfred. I have skill, uh, guild points to spare anyway. So we'll get more fighting skill scrolls because we need more than that. So... He got a new troop and he got a stat boost as well and lastly we're going to uh, do this last upgrade for him so that he can hit his tier 3 class so this will consume uh, guild points but it is far preferable to use guild points guild medals rather than to use stamina sweeping rifts so i really do strongly suggest joining a guild at level 25 when that unlocks for you so we're going to advance and fully master this class and that will enable us to get the stat boost, the permanent stat boost, as well as enable us to move him to the tier 3 class. So, let's get that done, just to show how it works. A 
lots and lots of stat boosts. Nice stat boosts. Sure you can. Alright, alright. So you get the skill. So for all tier 3 classes, the order is always the same. You get the skill. The left the left skill first. Then you get the leftmost troop. Then you get the rightmost skill. Then you get the rightmost troop. So we've already gotten the leftmost skill. The next upgrade will be the leftmost troop, so on and so forth. So this is how you upgrade. And you can see that from 1300 when we started, he's already at 2200 power. Uh, and uh, that's how you improve your heroes and you bring up the stats to the point where you can clear harder and harder content. Um, the last few things I want to mention are just in passing because this won't be available to new players anytime soon. This will only come a few months after you start playing once you hit uh, the end game but um, once you have fully mastered your tier 3 classes you can go into this class mastery panel where you can add additional stats to your heroes so that they become stronger and it enables you to tackle harder content right so these are class mastery stones that you get from ancient beckoning which is one form of end game pve that we will talk about in pve progression uh, a few videos later the last thing to note is that there's an awaken function here and what that does is for the first stage of awakening, you normally can only use uh, five points worth of skills. But if you complete the first stage of awakening, and these usually require materials from Bonding Realm level 70 and Time Rifts, what happens is that for characters who have completed the first stage of awakening, such as Bozo, you will see that he can use six costs of skills. The second stage of awakening unlocks an exclusive three cost skill, which is over here. Uh, over here so this is Rachel's three cost skill this is her awakening stage two skill which are normally very very high powered skills uh, they are exclusive to that particular hero themselves um, awakening is something you're going to be doing in the end game when you are level 70 because even though they, they lie to you and say that you know for example let's go back to Alfred they lie to you and say that this is unlocked when the hero reaches level 60 that's a lie because if you can see my level 60 heroes anyone's level 60 over here Hein, for example, you need a uh, level 70 just to for the first step of awakening. So these are just reserved for max level level 70 heroes. So um, we've covered a lot of things today. Um, we've covered uh, account level, hero level, uh, star levels, and how to get more shards of your heroes. And we also talked about how to upgrade classes, class mastery stones, as well as awakening. Um, in the next few videos, we'll be talking about equipment, troops, and bonds. But I hope this information holds you in good stead until we can cover those topics. As always, I hope this has been helpful, useful, entertaining, and this is Zethrion, signing off.